In this video, I will be talking about your NBC ice pack. NBC is nuclear biological chemical. Ice, from what I can find for an Ackerman, means individual chemical equipment, but I did not find that in an official military source, so I don't know if that's the correct definition. Your ice pack is all your chemical gear that you need to survive an NBC attack. Now, the first item, obviously, that you would need is your protective mask. This is an M40 series US made protective mask. It has on it a C2A1 filter. You might see some of these without the hoods. I just use a hood because it's an old force of habit. It's how I was trained. I'll explain a little bit more on that later. Your mask, you need to have a carrier with it. And if possible, a technical manual for the mask so that you can inspect it to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. Now, if you have a foreign mask, a German, Russian, Israeli, you know, British, whatever, find translations of the appropriate manual or at least find a site that gives you the inspection steps for going over the mask. You really do need to make sure your mask is serviceable. If there is a rip, a tear, anywhere, it's useless. Now, the bulk of your chemical gear is kept inside a bag like this one. This particular bag is the type we used the majority of the time I was in the military. That bag will hold a complete chemical suit, even if it's the old mop gear or the uh, BDOs, the battle dress over garment. This bag has two straps on it for cinching it tight after you put everything inside. You can if you want to, I never did. You can use Alice clips on here to attach it to the side of your gear. On these, there's also a pocket for putting in a name tag. I highly recommend you mark your ice packs in your unit so you know whose pack belongs to who. So if they get left in a vehicle, left in a cache or whatever, you know who it belongs to. You don't necessarily have to put the person's name on it. You can put a nickname, a code name, you know, the first letter of their last name and then the last four of their social. Just some way to identify that this bag belongs to this particular person and not someone else. Now, the contents of the bag. First, you need a chemical suit. This is a J-list suit. Uh, the, print, the correct spelling on it is JS list, joint service, lightweight, integrated suit technology. It's issued in two separate pieces unlike the old BDOs. You have a coat and a trousers. They are sized the same way as your uniform. So if you wear a medium regular top, you get a medium regular coat for the JS list. If you wear large regular bottoms, you get large regular trousers. On the backs of these bags, there is a size chart. And you can probably find the size chart also online to make it a little bit easier to figure out what size you need. It doesn't hurt to get a suit that's one size larger than your uniform. It uh, makes it easier actually to get it on and off. This is, I actually have a training set here. This is a J-list coat. They come with a hood on them. The js list you do not need to have a hood on your protective mask because you got a hood that's already included. The old BDOs and a lot of the foreign stuff, they didn't have hoods. So you have to make sure to have one on the mask. You do not want any exposed skin anywhere on your body in the event of an NBC attack. 
This is a pair of the JS list trousers. They come with suspenders, unlike the old BDOs, which did not. Uh, I knew a lot of guys used to have a set of suspenders with their ice packs. So when they had to put on the mop gear, they just put on the suspenders to, make, to help keep their pants up. Now next, you will need a pair of overboots. This particular pair, I believe, is a Danish surplus. I don't remember. I've been buying a lot of surplus ones from other countries to try them out, see which work the best. These work good uh, on pretty much any weird size boot that I have. So if you have like extra wide feet or really long feet, these work pretty good. Next, you need gloves. They are sized. This is a medium set. These are not the same as the type you use for washing dishes in your home. The rubber on those would not stand up to a chemical agent. They'll more than likely dissolve. This, this type of rubber is designed to handle industrial chemicals and military grade weapons, grade chemicals. Next part. For your ice pack is a helmet cover. It's just a rubberized cover that goes over the top of your helmet to keep the agent from soaking into your cover and then possibly getting up underneath of it, getting into the webbing of your of your cup of your helmet, and you know, possibly killing you when you downgrade. Now, if you have a hood on your mask you should have a spare hood that is a wartime hood the one I have on my mask right now is training only this is a brand new one that I would put on if there is a potential for some type of chemical attack you should also have a go to war filter I have a training one currently on my mask this is the one I would put on for if there's a possibility of a chemical attack. You will find C2A1 canisters inside the metal cans. If you get those, use them only for training. Use the, one, the ones in the plastic canisters for your go to war. Now on these, you see there's a lot number. Online, you will find lists of C2A1 canisters that were recalled. The reason being they were not manufactured properly. So they, they do not offer the required amount of protection. They may work against 90 or 95% of the expected chemical agents. Well, there's a reason why they have a list of what agents they're supposed to protect against. So before you buy a canister, check that lot number. Look up C2A1 recall list or C2A1 canister recall list and then look for the, your lot number make sure that it's not on that list if it is only use that canister for training or just plain don't get it now i've included these in my ice pack these are replacement caps for canteens those of you that served in the military you recognize this little tab on top here this is what protects the uh, connection for hooking up your drink tube to. These little tabs get torn off real easy, so I have some spares inside my ice pack that I can change out on my canteens so that if there is a chemical strike, you know, this connector stays clean. It's not gonna get contaminated, which would contaminate the water when you wanna take a drink. Now I also have here, M8 paper. This is extremely easy to use. I'll probably do a video on it. Um, there is a color chart inside that shows you what type of agent this chemical, this paper has detected once you've done a test on it. I do not have M9 detector tape. The reason for that is the chemicals on the M9 tape is very carcinogenic. If you ever 
handle M9 tape outside of the box, you need to have your chemical gloves on. And really you should when you handle the M8 paper also. But the uh, chemicals that are on the M8 paper are not as harsh as on the M9 paper. Now, you should also have in there decontamination kits. This is an, a set of M295 equipment decontamination kits. Inside these pouches is, glo is a glove that is impregnated with charcoal. Inside here there's four gloves inside this pack. I also have here M291 individual decontamination kits. There are six inside this pouch or inside this uh, set of pouches here. These are for use on your skin for decontaminating as you're putting the gear on if you've been hit and you're then going to mop four. Now I'm also including in my ice packs now these. That's folded up. This is folded out a little bit. This is folded into a quarter. This thing is huge. These are East German NBC ponchos. For those of you trained in the military for donning your chemical gear, you know, going to Mop 4, if you're out in the open, you're supposed to use a poncho. Throw it over the top of yourself and then decontaminate and put your gear on underneath. These are more than big enough from the way they look to be able to do that. So I recommend having one inside your ice pack and then possibly if a chemical strike is could occur maybe find a place for it inside your pro mask carrier. Uh, if you get a hold of the East German mask carriers, the newer ones, uh, there is a pouch on the inside for putting that poncho. NBC is extremely important. I know there's a lot of people who say if there's going to be an NBC strike they do not want to survive it. Well that kind of defeats the purpose doesn't it? Your purpose is to survive to continue to fight. If something does happen here in the United States and foreign troops are involved it's pretty much a certainty that chemical weapons will be used. So start gathering your ice pack now and try to get a set of gear to use as training and train with your gear. Train with it often until you, you can do it in your sleep because who knows your life may one day depend on it. 